Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very interesting exoplanet that might actually possess extremely Earth-like conditions. This one is not very close, but it's around a very similar star to our Sun. So let's talk about the discovery of Kepler-160d and welcome to Odeme. In the last few years we've had a lot of really exciting discoveries when it came to exoplanets and most recently we actually had a confirmation of the Proxima Centauri b which you see right here. This is the nearest exoplanet to us located in the habitable zone of its parent star system. And a lot of the planets we discovered, a lot of the exciting exoplanets, like for example the TRAPPIST-1 exoplanetary system that possesses several planets that might actually be very Earth-like, have created quite a lot of excitement in the last few years. But the thing about these other exoplanets is that pretty much most of them are located around the so-called red dwarfs. In other words, both TRAPPIST-1 and the nearby Proxima Centauri stars, they're actually not really similar to our Sun almost at all. They're much smaller, as you can see in this particular illustration, this is a typical red dwarf star. They're also a lot more active, they produce quite a lot of X-ray radiation, they produce a lot of really powerful and extremely dangerous flares. Some so powerful that they can easily strip any atmosphere or possibly any remains of water from the surface of nearby planets. And at the same time, due to the proximity of these planets to their parent star, because as you can see in the simulation of TRAPPIST-1 system, these planets are really really close to the parent stars, all of them are most likely tidally locked to the star, meaning that only one side is pointed toward the star, while the opposite side is always extremely cold. In other words, all of these planets, even if they are in the habitable conditions of their star system, they're maybe not really Earth-like at all. They're very likely extremely foreign and extremely alien to us. Which is why scientists for the past years have always really been more excited to look for these unusual planets around stars similar to our own Sun. The so-called G stars, or more specifically G2 stars. Stars that have relatively similar temperature, somewhere around this number right here, and the stars that possess similar conditions in terms of activity, in terms of the actual light produced, because the light coming from the red dwarf stars is always infrared. For the most part, they produce only infrared light, very very little optical light, and all of the planets in the red dwarf systems would be extremely dark for any life from planet Earth, including of course us. So here, the actual luminosity will be very very dim. However, G-type stars, similar to our Sun, obviously produce a lot of optical light. That's the light that our eyes use. So discovering exoplanets around G-type stars has always been sort of a priority. And completely by accident, very recently the scientists discovered yet another very similar to Earth planet around a G-type star located around 3000 light years away from us, but in data that we already had from years ago. In other words, this was a rediscovery of a planet that was always there in the data, but we just didn't really see it the first time. And this data is of course coming from the really famous Kepler telescope that's responsible for discovering most of the exoplanets we've found so far. It was able to collect a lot of data from various stars in a very specific region of the night skies for several years non-stop, and all of this data has been collected and saved on the servers that anyone can actually access. Which by the way you can check yourself uh, as well by going to one of the Kepler database websites such as the MAST website, which stands for Mikulski Aircraft Space Telescopes, which allows you to easily access the data from pretty much every major telescope. Here, if we look up Kepler-160 by its ID, which is right here, we can kind of see all of the data sets that have already been processed, with some of them showing us where the planets have passed in front of their stars. You can actually see the dip right here. It's somewhat uh, obvious, and if you zoom into it, it becomes even more obvious that something passed in front of the star. And this right here might actually be some sort of a flare that the star experienced. So these periodic passages is how we've discovered previous Kepler-160 planets, but there was obviously data that we kind of missed, mostly because some planets are a lot more difficult to see when they pass in front of the stars. One of the telltale signs that something was hidden here was actually from the orbits of the two planets that were already discovered a few years ago. Here, both Kepler-160b and 160c have an orbit uh, that could be technically described as in resonance, with every three orbits of the inner planet, the outer planet making one orbit. 
But there is a slight problem here. It's not exactly that. There's a slight disconnect between the resonance that we usually observe in other star systems and this one here. And also, the outer planet does seem to have unusual patterns in its orbit, suggesting that something else is acting on its orbit, making it a little bit different from what it should be. Because of this, the scientists behind this paper decided to investigate this, with the assumption that there was another planet somewhere on the outskirts pulling at the uh, planet Kepler-160c. And I guess it shouldn't come as a surprise that the planet was most likely discovered, although it still hasn't really been confirmed. But what is surprising is that, by looking at the old data, they discovered another planet that might have been in orbit all along, but we just didn't really see it. In other words, they discovered two additional planets. One, this one here, that's pulling on the outer planet known as C, has a mass of anywhere from like one mass of planet Earth to possibly hundred masses of planet Earth. So the scientists are not entirely sure because they haven't really seen it and they haven't observed where it's actually located. Its orbit is anywhere between 7 and 50 days, so it is pretty close to the parent star. But the other planet, which they've observed using a new algorithm that allowed them to analyze data a little bit more, is a lot more exciting because its orbit is around 378 days, a little bit longer than the orbit of planet Earth. And this is where we come to the most exciting part, the star itself. So this planet is definitely in the habitable zone of the parent star, star known as Kepler-160, which is surprisingly similar to our own Sun. It's maybe a little bit older, it's also possibly just a little bit bigger in size, but also slightly less massive. But what is really, really shocking here is that it produces just the exact amount of luminosity that our Sun does. In other words, these two stars produce just the same amount of heat at the distances where Earth would be. So the habitable zone of this star system is in exactly the same location, or very similar location, I guess, to our own solar system. Which of course implies that this planet right here receives a very similar amount of radiation that our planet Earth does. Although it's just slightly farther away from um, the Sun, or from its star, compared to planet Earth. But it's also a little bit larger. Actually, it's almost double the size of planet Earth. Here's what Earth looks like for comparison here, and this of course suggests that in terms of the actual amount of heat that this planet receives, it's about 93% of the amount of heat our planet receives. Which means that if this planet by some chance a terrestrial object, it has a surface, it possibly has some sort of uh, resemblance of ice on the surface, possibly a little bit of atmosphere, it might possess extremely Earth-like conditions. Although at the same time, it all really depends on its atmosphere and of course on a lot of other conditions such as, for example, it has active volcanism, it has plate tectonics, and I guess in some sense it also needs to have some sort of magnetosphere. If it has some of those features, there's a huge potential for this planet to be extremely Earth-like. The scientists even tried to calculate what would happen to this planet if it actually had Earth-like atmosphere and Earth-like greenhouse effects, and in this case, it would be approximately 5 degrees Celsius on average on the surface. That's a little bit colder than planet Earth. Earth on average is about 15 degrees Celsius. So that's about 10 degree difference. But nevertheless, it is probably one of the more exciting exoplanets we've discovered in the last few years. Assuming, of course, it exists, because it's still a candidate, it's not truly a confirmed exoplanet, and it's going to be really hard to confirm this one, because it's so far away from its parent star, so when it does pass in front of the star, it only creates a really, really tiny shadow that's extremely difficult to analyze. So the scientists studying this particular star system had to use a very advanced algorithm to even discover this object. And so, in comparison to planet Earth and our Sun, Currently, Kepler-160 does not really have any equivalents. This system seems to be the most analogous to our own solar system when it comes to the relationship between the star and the planet in its orbit. In other words, this is currently one of the most, if not the most, Earth-like objects we've discovered in terms of the star and planet interaction. All of the other Kepler discoveries have actually been extremely different from anything we have in the solar system, and all of the other objects we usually refer to as Earth-like are normally around red dwarf stars, so they are very different to anything we have here in the solar system simply because their stars are so different. 
And the good news is that we'll be able to confirm this planet in approximately 6 to 7 years when the so-called Plato telescope from the European Space Agency launches in 2026 and allows us to investigate this object in a little bit more detail. But I guess the bad news here is that this planet is like really really far away. So far away as a matter of fact that if you were to try to discover that star in the night skies because of the distances involved, it's actually almost impossible to see it. You would need to have a very powerful telescope to even see the star itself. And I think there it is. There's that star. So that star is really far away, 3,100 light years away from us. So don't expect to pack your bags just yet. We're not going there anytime soon. Nevertheless, it's a really exciting discovery and might allow us to see if there are any other similar stars and similar planets somewhere closer to us. So in that sense, I'm actually kind of excited to hear more about this star system in the future. But until then, that's unfortunately it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.